Something else we've been talking a lot about since the beginning of the school year, the influx of asylum seekers, students within the New York City public school system. We know the chancellor and the mayor, they were right here on Eyewitness News mornings at 10 and they were discussing this important topic. And now our very own Darla Miles is taking us on an exclusive first look inside a school in the Bronx to see how staff and students are experiencing it all. Welcome to Mornings at 10. Thank you. Thank it you. is very good to see you, Thank you for, for a very me. important topic. Yeah, so fill us in on how this is going to work with migrant students and how it's working now. Well, here's the important thing about this story, Sam. A lot of what we're seeing uh, in the public domain is very outward facing, right? We see students going into the school. We see migrants lining up to get inside of the shelter. But the point of this entire story is that inward facing it looks like a normal school mm. so this story kind of stemmed from New York City Schools Chancellor David Banks who was actually mm -hmm. here the first week that yeah. Eyewitness News at 10 mornings uh, debuted and you know we were having a discussion and I said well how are things going with the migrant crisis and he said well it looks like any other school yeah. I said well well, why don't you let us see? Because we're eyewitness news. So he did allow our cameras to be the very first cameras inside of the school. And this is the second year they're actually dealing with this crisis. And so they have some things that they've put in place that are now working. So it's one of three schools that's dealing with this big influx. Um, clearly, they're going to have the challenge of language, right? So teachers. So here's the big thing. Um, so everybody knows what ESL, right, is. Right. Uh, yes. English as a second language. Well, they've now kind of adapted the curriculum. It's ENL. That's a new big thing. English as a new language. So they have all of the new English language learners uh, and that is what the literacy curriculum is because you have to think about it. Some of these asylum seekers English is not their second language. It's not right. even their third language right. or their fourth right. language. Good right. They speak a lot of different languages. And so uh, they're all new English language learners. Uh, they have iPads. One thing that they're being equipped with is an iPad and Google Photos. And so if this is a tool that they have externally outside of the classroom mm -hmm. where they can take a picture of something and they can translate it and it kind of helps get them more up to speed yeah. uh, with what they're learning. Well, I know there, there, there was that big announcement with Mike Mulgrew, the head of the UFT, the United Federation of Teachers, and, and making it a point that there were going to be teachers available to accommodate all the needs that the students had with the different languages. It's interesting. What, what struck you, though? I mean, you were inside the school. And you spoke to teachers as well, Yeah, right? so what did you, I mean, what do you I think? I have to tell you, first of all, my dad was a teacher. Everybody yeah. knows I talk yeah. about Coach Miles all the time. <laughs> so my dad was a teacher. My grandmother was a teacher. My uncle was a teacher. And so I just love walking into any school because I just love the smell mm -hmm. of the school. And, and you want to know what I just excitement level, right? And yeah. guess what? It felt exactly uh, the same as it felt when yeah. I was in middle school or high school. First of all, so we were at um, MS 181 in the Bronx, Pablo Casals. It's in Co-op City. Yeah. And they've accepted an extremely large number mm -hmm. of migrants in this particular school. And so what's very interesting about this is that they really didn't have a lot of English language learners in that school. They may have had one or two mm -hmm. ESL students, and now they have an influx mm -hmm. of ENL students. So I spoke with a teacher. Oh. Her name is Melissa Lonquish, and she talks about how maybe they had one or two per year, and now they have several hundred and how they're dealing with that. So, you know, she really shares my enthusiasm about what they're doing to kind of make it uh, special for them. Let's migrants. hear from her. Mm -hmm. All right. Day one, we assign them a buddy. So they have a buddy in their class that speaks English and speaks Spanish. So they're able to kind of communicate with the rest of the group. This is what we're looking for. This is what the teacher just said. Um, so that helps out a lot. We also now this year implemented kind of teacher buddies as well. So each teacher or guidance counselor assigned a few kids and we make sure every day we check in with the kids once a week at least we have a bigger check-in and we check in with the families so they know if there's anything they need help with any need at all whether it be academic or not they know who to go to so forming that relationship really helps like the structure of everything we um, made sure any technology they need they have at home they have here this year we also gave them iPads so now we try as much as we can to give them native language support, but we're not a bilingual school, so we can only do so much of it. A lot of the teachers don't speak Spanish, so we give them the tools that they can learn the English themselves if there's something they want to see and they don't know what it is. And I feel like the oh. migrant learning headline got a little bit out of control with the, oh, what are we going to do with the migrant crisis? And you're bringing this story in the perspective of a child. And the AP did this story as well, taking it from a, a young kid who's excited, leaving a homeless shelter, excited to go to school, skipping and jumping and happy. And we are supposed to provide that for kids. That should be their experience. Is that 
Kind of how, as you saw it? Like Coach Miles said, they're always, they're all sweet babies, right? Yeah. We just, that's how we look at them. And so we're going to have a lot of reporting on this this week. But one thing that I learned from Melissa uh, Longquist, she said, like, the first year, yes, everyone was scared. And that was, you know, understandable. Right. That's a normal human reaction. Yeah. But this year, they're into a rhythm, and we're going to have a lot more reporting this week about Bravo. some of the things that they're doing to... Uh, Make it work. I, I love. I love it. I love that we're having the conversation. I believe in these the teachers. I believe yep. in the public school system. Yep. They work with less, yeah. and they're making it happen for these kids. I'm a public school baby myself. Yep. So yeah, there you so go. Much. We all are. <laughs>